to the inaugural episode of Behind the Game. I'm Patrick Klinger. This is a sports show, but it's really not about sports. At least it's not about the action that takes place on the field, the court, or the ice. It's really about what happens behind the scenes and the influential people who help shape the way that we watch and enjoy sports. My name is Bill Robertson, and I am the current men's commissioner of the WCHA, and it's an honor to host co-host with Patrick Klinger on this show and with the inaugural uh, event today we have Maureen Bausch the CEO of the Super Bowl. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. It's great to have you and I, I think this will be an exciting program as we develop over the time and we're th so thankful that you were able to join us today. No, no. We like to talk about the Super Bowl. <laughs> awesome. So let's let's start with uh, a little bit of background so people understand you, your background before we get into some questions about the Super Bowl and, and what you're doing there. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I started my career in marketing with Cub Foods and I was there for 13 years and then when Mall of America was being built, I came over in public relations to Mall of America and I was there for 25 years. Um, I had several different jobs at Mall of America from started in public relations and then marketing and then I was the general manager. The, well, we always shared it. Uh, Dave Hazelman and I um, were general managers together and then vice presidents together and then executive vice president of business development when I left after 25 years and then I came here. Awesome. And th the transition from running Mall of America into running the Super Bowl, one of the biggest events in the country. Tell us a little bit about how that process has gone. Well, we don't get a do-over at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at Mall of America, we had a do-over every day. <laughs> but it was, um, it, you know, when I, when I was hired, um, I said, we have, we have very little time, and we have to make sure we hire the right people. Um, we don't want to make mistakes. And so I was lucky enough, our board um, realized the capacity of Dave Hazelman, our COO, who was with Mall of America. We were partners for years as we went through Mall of America. Wendy Blackshaw, who was also at Mall of America right. in the early days, a great, she's a great marketer, and then she went on to Sun Country, um, and several others that we knew. And so we've been able to build a great team. But they also said, this, this is a wonderful platform to showcase Minnesota, and they wanted to use it as a, as a real opportunity to complete the Minnesota story, at least for the time being. Well, I know, we know it's going to be an exciting time for the state of Minnesota and I'm very proud to host this event. And I know that you've been working around the clock to make it special. Is it, is it everything you thought it was going to be at this point? Or are there there's so many moving pieces, it's hard to, to, to garner exactly what the Super Bowl is all about? You know, we wrote a business plan back in early 2015. And you do. You're not given a book on how to run the Super Bowl. Actually, you're given a book, but it's only about that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't tell anything, it's about 10 years old. So um, we wrote a business plan, we wrote a marketing plan, and the most rewarding thing right now is to see, I bet 90% of those ideas come to life. And it's all through a great team, of course, and um, great Minnesotans that have stepped up to help. So it's, it's really exciting right now. Now, I will be really excited on February 5th <laughs> when everyone gets home safely. Marine, what, what do you think Minnesota, and maybe Minneapolis in particular, has been so successful in luring big events like the Super Bowl? Um, you know, obviously we had the, the Ryder Cup here in Minnesota recently, the NCAA, NCAA Final Fours on the heels mm -hmm. uh, of the Super Bowl. We've had a long history of, of being able to secure some really pretty significant events in Minnesota? and I, Well, I think there's a few reasons. Um, we have wonderful venues, first of all. You have to have a place to play these games or to put them on. But we have a very engaged business community, and all these events require sponsorship and partnerships from the business community. And third, we have the most amazing volunteers in this state. Um, over 40% of Minnesotans volunteer and most of these big events require volunteers. So I think, I think those three um, certainly are, are some of the main reasons. I know with the NFL, they were very impressed um, with the companies that had stepped up during the bid process 
and um, and said, well, we're in. Well, I have to believe that your Cub Foods experience and, and maybe even to a higher higher level, your Mall of, America, Mall of America experience has really helped you in this job as the CEO and the experiences you had at, at both those organizations probably have put you in a good spot to to handle what we had talked about off air a little bit about the flexibility and adaptability of changes on the fly. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. And we we had about a hundred thousand people a day come through Mall of America, and you absolutely had to be flexible and also change with the times. Um, you have to stay relevant from a marketing standpoint, a retail standpoint, but also from a security and operation standpoint. And we were able to do that there. In this particular situation, the host committee controls a certain aspect of the Super Bowl festival, but we don't control all of it. It is brought to us by the NFL, and they control a large portion. Certainly the game, all the stadium beforehand, getting that stadium ready is a huge operation with all the different camera angles, and they'll, they'll kill some seats, and they'll put in, you know, mm -hmm. All of that, they do take over the convention center for Super Bowl experience, which is phenomenal. So I think particularly in this job, you have to be able to be uh, work well with others and um, understand where your role begins and ends and make it very easy for them to work in this market as well as achieve the goals that Minnesota has for this game. So. So Tickets to the Super Bowl are obviously limited, mm -hmm. and they're not inexpensive. So a lot of Minnesotans will not be able to get into the game, obviously. But tell us a little bit about how people of, of the region can enjoy all the festivities around the Super Bowl, even if they can't get a ticket into the game. Well, that's, that's our job, to make sure there's things for people to do that have a dollar to spend or, or that have $10,000 to spend, who are one or 100. But we have created, well, First of all, the Super Bowl experience is an NFL attraction, and it's wonderful. It's a $35 price point. It's an all-day uh, experience. Um, that's in our convention center. It's everything. It's two and a half times as large as Nickelodeon Universe, and it's everything you want to do around football. The rings are there. The Lombardi Trophy is there. The, there's um, fields that you can you know, play games. There's electronic games. There's locker rooms, et cetera. It started here in 1992 as punt, pass, and kick. Hmm. And it has grown so it doesn't even hmm. fit in our convention center. It is so cool. But I, I want to tell people to buy their tickets now because um, while they're open from Saturday, January 27th, until um, uh, Sunday, no, they close Saturday. They close Saturday before the game. It will, there's only a certain capacity. So if you want to go, get your tickets. They go on sale December 5th, which is Monday. Um, as far as the free entertainment, that's, we have t uh, six blocks of Nicollet Mall, and we have designed a wonderful attraction, starting with a fan dome, and that is at the north end, I think it would be the south end of Nicollet Mall, PV Plaza. And you go in, can hold about 400 people, it'll be warm, and it's a 360 degree um, but I'm not sure, what do you call those domes where the, the videos go around you? And it takes you from training camp all the way through the Super mm. Bowl. So you really feel like you're in the game. And plus it will be warm. Remember, it's February <laughs> and winter in Minnesota. So we look for indoor, outdoor attractions. They'll be ice skating. We are bringing um, the Berkey Bridge. Are you familiar with the Birkenbinder in northern sure. Wisconsin? Well, 18 semis later, the Berkey Bridge will be on Nicollet Mall because the Lopet needs a place to ski, the dogs need a place to run, you need to sure. do a ski journey. So that is between, it also is very high, so cars can go under it and we don't have to close roads. So you'll see ski ex exhibitions and so on. And that is between uh, 10th and 9th and 10th. And we have 23 sponsors that have created wonderful entertaining attractions down Nicollet Mall. Uh, you'll see ice sculptures, photo ops, etc. All this is free. There'll be food and beverage that I. We really ask them to um, to create a winter uh, a winter menu, hearty soups, the juicy Lucy's, things that Minnesota is famous mm -hmm. for. 
So it's a food experience too. And then um, the, the, the show piece is this ice stage that is attached to the Dayton building. And that's what Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis are helping us program with the Minnesota Sound. It'll be a once in a lifetime lineup of musicians. They announced 19 today that are coming. We'll announce 19 more in the next few weeks, probably a lot more than 19. Um, but they're all free. There'll be short concerts because it will be cold. <laughs> 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 but so many of these musicians are coming back to Minnesota to perform. It's very cool. It is very cool. And that's all free and open to the public. And then the wonderful new open o owners of the Dayton Project have allowed us to use the um, the building inside on the first floor. And so the NFL will have a wonderful big store there. Um, you'll see some media organizations with outposts in there. Um, we have a really great, um, a really great network coming in. And I'm not sure, when, when does this start to air? Next couple of days. Next couple of days. Well, I'm not sure <laughs> if it's releasable or not, but there'll be attractions, let's just say that, inside Macy's that will be destination attractions. It's great. It's so. great. You know, you talked a little bit about the outdoor uh, events. Um, does a colder climate like Minnesota, and we, and we realize that in 1992, mm -hmm. Minnesota hosted the Super Bowl, and yet 1992 to 2018 is a long time, and, and a lot has changed about the events surrounding the Super Bowl. But does a colder climate for our viewers out there, do you believe that has any drawbacks, or, or how do you capitalize on that if you have all these people coming from out of town, and there are many coming from other countries and coming from warm weather climates to Minnesota? Well, I think it. it we won't we won't know who's really coming from outside the region until the 21st of January when we know which two teams will be in the game if it's and and teams travel differently and their fan base travels differently so if it's the east coast they they're not afraid of our weather um there are some teams that probably would be afraid of our weather <laughs> <laughs> and so we're kind of hoping that those teams don't get in it but but the region i mean we are the bold north we're going to capitalize on it, come and have some fun, experience the winter, enjoy it. Um, it is February. You can't hide it, so we might as well lean into it. And I think we have enough indoor-outdoor experiences as you, as you move down Nicollet Mall. And then, of course, Mall of America is a hub for many things. Radio Row will be out at Mall of America, which is a, a completely climate-controlled environment. Yes. Um, in St. Paul, they have a number of activities, both indoor and outdoor. So, I think I think people will will be able to experience the the, mm. the bold north, but not freeze. <laughs> well, I've, I've heard some speculation that this may be the last cold weather Super Bowl that the NFL is is inclined to to keep the games south. Do you think that? <laughs> no, that's I don't. The case? I think I don't think they could do that. I think there's too many cities that want it. Um, is certainly, I think what what matters more is the campus you have to work with, and um, Indianapolis is considered one of the best Super Bowls ever, and that's you know considered mm -hmm. a semi northern climate. Um, they had to plan for snow removal just like we do. It ended up to be 40 degrees, so they really didn't have to uh, use it, but that is considered one of the very best because of the the layout of the campus, because of the energy in the city. Um, the volunteers and so on, and ours is mimicking that very closely. It's the plan we used to design this Super Bowl uh, was based on what Indianapolis did. So um, we are spread out over three cities, that, but they're very close. So I, I don't, I mean, it, you know, in, in Arizona, a warm weather climate, it rained for two or three days during Super Bowl uh, festival, and that that's just as difficult as snow here. So I can't remember if, um, I think San Francisco had okay weather. I think Houston had okay mm -hmm. weather. But no one seems too afraid <laughs> of it. They seem to be leaning into it and, uh, That's great. and buying winter clothes. How about your proudest moment so far? I know probably your proudest moment will be 
uh, as we discuss maybe the day after the Super yeah. Bowl when everybody <laughs> leaves town. But uh, uh, for you right now, uh, taking on this huge challenge uh, is amazing, number one, and you've done a wonderful job to date, but I'm sure you have a few things or maybe one thing in particular that you could pinpoint as of this airing that you'd say, I'm really proud that we were able to do blank. Well, there's, there's a few things, like you said, that I think probably what um, moved our entire team more than anything and made us feel like we were part of something much bigger than ourselves was at the Excel Center um, three weeks ago we had our first volunteer rally and it was um, on a Sunday afternoon. It was four to six. People started lining up. We had invited, um, you know, we have 10,000 volunteers. We, we estimated um, that about 8,000 would show up, 9,000, um, although they were all invited. But it was a Sunday afternoon and, and um, the Vikings were on and we didn't think people would want to leave their television and so on. Um, they started lining up at one o'clock in the afternoon. We opened the doors at 2.30. We had only thought we'd use the lower bowl. We had 12,000 people show up and they were excited for the entire time. We were blown over by the enthusiasm of our volunteers and it, it was like, wow, all these years of work, these three years have been worth it. So we, we were really excited about that. Um, also our legacy fund. Our goal was, we're Super Bowl 52 and from a marketer's perspective, that's about the easiest <laughs> number to work with, <laughs> 52 weeks in a year. And we said, what if we were able to make 52 grants? Could we raise enough money to make 52 grants in the areas of kids, in the area of kids' health and wellness? And to be to say that, and we and Dana Nelson from Give Men joined our team. And she was able to put together an amazing strategy with the Department of Health. Department of Education and several other leaders in the industry. And we are on week, I think it is 45. And I thought that they would be burned out by week 30, you know? Because mm. when you think about going to all parts of Minnesota, 52 different communities, and first she had to raise the money, and then they had to give it away in a way that it would be sustained for seven to 10 years and they did it beautifully, professionally, working with all the, the experts. And then they had to go out and each week create an event in that particular city. And I thought, oh my gosh, they're gonna burn out. But they come back more rejuvenated every single week. When you go to Grand Portage and a little kid says, I'm part of the Super Bowl, they just build, built a park for me, it's worth every minute. So I think those, those two, um, and then just watching the team develop and work together, they really are all experts in their field and it's fun to watch them create together. I live uh, just a couple of blocks away from the XL Energy Center and I got caught up in that traffic <laughs> that day. Isn't that crazy? And it was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was remarkable. You know, w w with an event of this magnitude, Maureen, obviously security is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect that there are going to be some restrictions around downtown Minneapolis, certainly on game day, but perhaps even before the game. Can you talk a little bit about what residents of Minneapolis and visitors can expect? Well, there's a document that lives on our website, mnsuperbowl.com, called Know Before You Go. And it's a complete outline of what will happen when, when the roads might be closed, when security barriers go up and so on. Our goal, certainly is not to close anything until six o'clock on Friday night before the game. So Super Bowl Live, all those concerts, all those winter activities are on Nicollet Mall, which won't have cars on it anyway. And we're gonna keep every road open except for A Street so that people mm -hmm. can get to work. We don't open until four o'clock on weekdays. So on weekends we'll be open all the time, but on weekends or on weeknights we'll only open at four o'clock. So people can come down after work enjoy some music, um, have something to eat, and then go home. Um, on, around the stadium, the perimeter around the stadium doesn't really go up until six o'clock on Friday night before the game is when, when, we, when mm. we affect some roads over there. But it's all on know before you go, mnsuperbowl.com. That'll be helpful right. to a lot of people. It's, 
for sure. It, it is really, and, and all the buses are running and, and the light rail runs, it just, after, after Friday night, it just doesn't make that one stop next to the stadium, but it stops everywhere else and it keeps going through. Sure. T tell me a little bit about uh, the analysis you've had to do looking back at the 92 Super Bowl and as we discussed mm -hmm. in this conversation that it's the, the Super Bowl and the events surrounding have evolved over time and mm -hmm. it gets bigger and bigger. But looking back at the 92 Super Bowl, which I was uh, in attendance and enjoyed that experience, and it was the first ever NFL experience that mm -hmm. was ever put on uh, from what I understand and the first taste of the NFL mm -hmm. was the first, first time in, in the Twin Cities. But uh, was there a lot of research and data that you took from 92 and said, we need to look at that, analyze it, and put some of those things in place? Or did you just say, you know, that was, that was the past and we're dealing with what's happening in 217 and 218? Oh, you can always learn from the past. <laughs> yes. And we are lucky enough to have Marilyn as one of our chairs, Marilyn Carlson Nelson, yes. who is the chair of the 92. Um, so we were lucky to have her historical record. And she continues to add you know, elements and, and remind us of, oh, this happened and this happened, and that does really help. Um, so I went to the History Center. I looked in through the boxes of articles and things like that. So, But, it, but the experience we had um, at that volunteer rally, we had 200 volunteers that volunteered in 92 that are part of our volunteer corps wow. today. We call them the <laughs> Hall of Fame volunteers. So there's lots of history, and sure. it was a four-day event back then. It's a 10-day event now. Um, Marilyn said they didn't have need 10,000 volunteers, obviously, because it wasn't three, you know, over three cities, and it wasn't um, 10 days. Um, but we we haven't been able to track down just how many volunteers they had. They wore Zubas, remember the <laughs> Zuba pants? <laughs> Bill still wears them. <laughs> <laughs> they wore the, but today we have these beautiful uniforms designed by Target, and uh, Cub is our kindness trainer, and the Cub kindness training, and so um, the volunteers are really outfitted from head to toe. They have sure. a number of pieces they get. Um, they all got their assignments uh, this week, so then they go into training in January. So we're, we're learning a lot um, uh, as we go from other markets um, in recent history probably the most. Okay. Indianapolis was particularly helpful and Houston. Houston's been mm. great and they did a phenomenal job. In San Francisco too. Was really good. You know the the halftime shows become just about as big as the game itself <laughs> And you've got a fantastic yeah. act this year. Justin Timberlake yeah. is coming back. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect. Well, Justin was a favorite, and we put in, you know, we don't have any control over the halftime show, except to find them a place to practice. That's the host committee's role. And um, so we, we did all that, but then we'd always just go at that extra step and say, well, we would like, we would like. And Justin was always what came in on Twitter as the number one request. So we feel very honored to, to have been able to <laughs> to, to get what, the, what our population wanted. But the music is so much a part of the, the Super Bowl experience today. There'll be concerts at the Excel, Dave Matthews on the night before, with, um, and then The Taste will have a band uh, there at the River, Play, River Center. Um, we have concerts in the Armory, concerts at Mystic Lake, um, concerts at most of the venues downtown, and then the nonprofit events. So many of these football alumni or current players will do um, nonprofit events during that 10 day period and they will bring in music and entertainers. So it's definitely going to be filled mm -hmm. with as much music as football. Well, there certainly won't be a lack of events going on <laughs> during those 10 days, that is for sure. Maureen, a little bit about uh, working with the National Football League as a, as a whole. I mean, the game itself is, we understand that that's their event and the team's coming in. You have no control over who wins those games. But I, I think from a viewer perspective, they'd like to know maybe a little bit about dealing with the business of the NFL and how that's gone for you. You know, it's, it's um, been actually really great. They're professionals. They have done this 52, well, this is the 52nd time they've done this, so they know what they're doing. 
Um, and there is a Minnesotan among them, Todd Lywicki, who's the chief operating officer of the NFL. So he has been great. Peter O'Reilly is the main point person. He's the senior vice president in charge of all events. And we've really gotten to know them over the last few years. And um, they're a great group. They have, they have um, a, it, at the top of whatever they do is a fan experience, the safety, the security, and the experience a fan gets. And that is their ultimate goal, mm -hmm. to make sure it's, it's above and beyond, which is why the NFL is so successful. I mean, as we record this, the Vikings are playing pretty well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's some hope that maybe, just maybe, they'll be playing in the Super Bowl this year. How do things change for you if that happens? Does well, it first, it would be a dream come true if the Vikings were, you know, it's never happened before that a home team played in their own stadium. So it would be a first. And from a host committee standpoint, we would absolutely be over the moon if they got there. Um, it does cause a few operational <laughs> issues um, for us, but we, we'll, we'll take those. We'll take those in a, in a nanosecond. But, um, but we need to be in that stadium working. Um, the NFL does on January 2nd. So if there's a playoff game, you, you really are pushed back till the 14th for sure. Hmm. Um, better yet, if it was the <laughs> 21st. But um, so, you know, it's just, it can be done. It's just a little bit harder, but well worth it. But can you imagine the excitement? It'll be, it'll be unbelievable if that would happen. I, there'd be so many people coming and looking for tickets that already haven't asked you for tickets. <laughs> That's so true. But they have fans, you know, their, their territory is huge. It's North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, good portion of Iowa, um, Canada. And we really try to market Super Bowl um, Live and Super Bowl Experience to that fan base. So it would be wonderful to have them come in. We only have less than a minute to go, but oh. uh, we wanted to ask you before we closed, what's next for Marine? I mean, <laughs> Cub Foods, the Mall of America, CEO of the Super Bowl. Uh, is there an extra? Are you going to take some time off, or what are you going to do? No, I, I would. I mean, I, I'm sure I'll take a little vacation, but um, we we have to pay the bills and tear down and close close up but no I'd, I'd still like to do do something <laughs> after this so if anyone has any ideas <laughs> call me <laughs> well we want to from Patrick and I we want to say thank you for being oh. our inaugural guest today oh good luck the show will yeah, probably fantastic. be very thank successful you. thank you we know the it's ratings will go through the roof yeah <laughs> <laughs> with you on um, the show but we want to say thank you to all our viewers out there for the inaugural edition of Behind the Game. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you again really soon. And thank Maureen Bosch, CEO of the Super Bowl, for being our guest. Anytime.